Joining us now is Ojo Pei with stories trending around the world. Hello, Genex. Good morning, Dr. Vati. How are you this morning? Weekend? Great. How's your weekend? Good, Perfect. Good. good morning, Tundun. How are you? Oji, I'm Perfect. Good, thank you. good morning, Rufai. How are you this morning? Oji, as well. Perfect. Well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. We begin what's trending with reactions to a viral video showing thousands of supporters at the presidential wing of the Morutala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, welcoming the flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress, Asiwaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu, on Sunday. The former governor of Lagos State was returning to his home state for the first time after clinching the APC presidential ticket. The supporters gathered in various groups in and around the airport to receive the former governor. Traditional singers and dancers were also present at the airport to entertain. Another video showed Asiwaju's convoy leaving the airport after they allegedly held up traffic for more than three hours. The president. Look at him moving as if the president is coming. Meanwhile, he's not yet the president. Look at the way he's moving. Look at the convoy. You can see the convoy. Ah, we are finished. We are finished. We are finished. We are finished in this country. This is the man Tinubu who kept us here for the past three hours. We've been waiting. The roads we have blocked for three hours. Waiting for the so-called Mr. Tinubu. We see the convoy. Even the president, even the, 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 the president of, of the world does not have this kind of convoy that I'm seeing here today. Well, in another development. The bus conveying press crew covering the Lagos State Governor's Office on Sunday was heavily attacked by thugs, leaving no fewer than two journalists wounded, with others sustaining various scars on their bodies. The press crew bus, which was part of the convoy of Asiwajubola Ahmed Tinubu, conveying dignitaries, including the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, and the Kanu State Governor, Abdullahib Ganduje, was attacked by the thugs who threw heavy stones at the bus repeatedly. The incident occurred while the bus was in transit on the Lagos Island, right after the dignitaries left the palace of the Abba of Lagos after paying him a courtesy visit. Now, this is quite unfortunate what happened to our journalists uh, yesterday. Really sad situation. I don't know if you saw some of those videos. Some of them were bleeding. So I believe two of them were severely injured, one in the eye and the other in the wrist or somewhere um, as well. But also those videos circulating of um, Asiwaju's um, arrival yesterday was quite shocking for a lot of Nigerians because a lot of people are saying, well, how is it that he's not even a president? Like if you heard from um, our eyewitness um, saying that he held up traffic for three hours. I don't know how true that is, but, you know, it's a, it's a really uh, shocking situation for a lot of Nigerians. Well, this was tr truly shocking. And many Nigerians have every... Uh, right to be outraged, to be alarmed. And the gentleman who was running the commentary in the background there was saying, look, he's not yet president mm -hmm. and he's doing this. So if Ashwajubola Ahmed Chinumu becomes uh, president, what then would happen? Because shutting down either the airspace or the road when a VIP, they call the, the phrase itself a very important uh, personality. In Nigeria, the airspace could be shut down for hours on end, endangering the lives of other people. Then on the road, you have uh, the big man syndrome. The big man arrives, the entire town shuts down. And in this particular case, the gentleman running the commentary in the background said the road was shut down for three hours. Three hours of a uh, productive time, you know, just causing mayhem, just because the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress uh, arrived from Abuja, uh, where he had been. Even governance in Lagos had to be suspended momentarily because the governor, too, was at the airport uh, to welcome uh, uh, his uh, political leader and godfather. So the hardship that people were subjected to was not necessary. And that convoy, too, that conspicuous display of the big man syndrome was also something that some people would find, you know, uncomfortable. If uh, the... Uh, 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 the uh, presidential candidate is coming into town, he could have arrived quietly. He could have uh, gone straight quietly to uh, the National Stadium uh, at uh, Surulere to receive people. There is uh, another stadium there, the Mubalaji Johnson Stadium, that could have been used. Tafaha Balewa Square could have been used. But to cause this kind of a disruption was, uh, you know, uh, quite strange. The second thing was that, look, he was accompanied by security men. The security men could not provide security for the ordinary people. 
when the convoy, the convoy was leaving the uh, Obasi Palace. Nothing wrong in going to visit the Oba of Lagos, reporting uh, to the monarch to say, well, your son is now presidential candidate of the party. I have no problem with that. But could we do all of that with some modicum of discretion, of decency? And the bus that was attacked by hoodlums, uh, it had boldly written on its uh, screen, on its, uh, you know, uh, in the, on the front of the vehicle, press crew. Yes. So the attack on journalists, was it deliberate or was it uh, merely uh, accidental? And the lady you were referring to uh, that had broken glass in her eyes, that's, that's the lady being shown there. Uh, her name is Adiola Ogunite. And she was quoted in one of the papers today that, you know, they were taken to the hospital yesterday and that she will go to the hospital again today. These hoodlums were wearing cutlasses. And Sharpened blades, un unacceptable. guns perhaps, although that, was, that has not been confirmed, you know, so it could have been worse. Somebody could have been killed. Two journalists were injured. What if those persons had been injured, had, had been killed? Journalists just going about their normal uh, duty. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think that uh, the uh, Bola Ahmed Chinumbu campaign organization owes the people of Lagos and those who were injured you know, some kind of uh, apology for causing needless pain and disruption out of the enthusiasm of celebrating his emergence as a presidential candidate of the APC. And we hope that uh, going forward, this will not happen again. You know, the campaign should be conducted in a very secure manner because it's only when people are alive and they are in good health that they can enjoy whatever benefits of democracy. Uh, the APC and its presidential candidate are promising the Nigerian people if they win in 2023. Tundu, I'm going to read a tweet from my phone. This is from Ugo Chiku, who wrote, um, America and other democracy will be laughing at us. Presidential candidate with exotic private jet, still Agbero in Lagos, who don't have any hope of the next meal, is beating support drum for him. No, unacceptable. I just think that it doesn't make any sense. I'm not entirely sure if the roads were closed for three hours. Some people say that that's an exaggeration, but that's neither here nor there. The whole point of closing roads, closing airspace for VIPs is security, right? But then look at that convoy as it was driving past. You had, I saw two motorcycles, couriers. I think they were delivering some, you know those motorcycles with the, with the box at the back? driving right along with the cars. Mm -hmm. So if we're closing down roads for security, why would you have motorcycle delivery people, um, courier people right next to you? Any one of them could have had a gun and shot. So really, it says to me, this is not about security, this entire spectacle. So this entire spectacle just looks like yet another way that the political elite is out mm -hmm. of touch with your average Nigerian. Because if it's not about security of lives, then what, what is the point? What were those motorcycles doing? in such close proximity. And also, the hoodlums who attacked the press bus also show how hoodlums got so close to the convoy. So if security was not achieved, then what exactly was the point? So I think that Bola Ahmed Tinubu's campaign needs to look at the protocols and really re-examine this, because all of this has just caused ill will it has not provided security. So there are no gains from this entire exercise, is what I'm trying to say. Then what was the point of that? You just don't want to put people off unnecessarily when you're campaigning to win hearts and minds. Exactly. When you're campaigning to win hearts and minds. Rufai. <sighs> Who did this to Nigeria? Governance is about service. You are begging to serve the people of Nigeria. But what do we see? Power show. Fela sang a song in 1981. I have to be precise about the year. He says, I open my eyes and I see in my country. Power show. Since 1981. Up till 2023 or 2022. Everybody does power show. It's a reflection of the society. Why block roads in the first place? Who are we in this country? Who are we really? The political class always look for ways to show the people that they are beneath them. And that's why over the years the political class weaponizes poverty. And they do all sorts. 
But it's something the political class normally do. I mean, we remember a time in this country now that somebody will come to Lagos and there will be traffic all over. And I remember people saying all sorts of flimsy reasons. The person might just be coming to Lagos to visit somebody and there will be traffic all over. Across every political party, all of them do it. But should we have a country this way? Should we have a country where there's no even respect at all for anything? Look at the airport. I feel a plane parked and people are so close at that proximity. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Uh, please, maybe they will correct me if I'm wrong. Or maybe the plane was parked somewhere else. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Then blocking the road. Then journalists attacked for doing their job. All because a presidential candidate came back to town. So what will happen if the presidential candidate wins? A one-week public holiday? I like that question you asked. No, because let's ask ourselves this question. Politicians should remember that they are there to serve Nigerians. And this is the same Nigerians that are living in poverty. Over 100 million of them. Their subsidy rates now, the so-called subsidy, is affecting the economy so much that we might be defaulting on our debt soon. We have all sorts of problems in town. In Lagos, as we speak, there's still a high number of unemployment rates. I don't have the exact figure, but when you check the unemployment rate in Lagos, it's high. Yeah. So why is it that Nigerian people are always at the receiving end? At first, it was the colonial masters that dealt with us. Now it's our politician. What is happening? Well, uh, OG, just before you move on, I, I saw a WhatsApp message just now uh, from Benga Motor Show, the Commissioner for Information Lagos State. He's trying to offer an explanation. Okay. He says, well, it's all lies. Roads were not short for three hours. But one gentleman in the video was the person we were referring to. The convoy was formed by party faithful and ordinary Lagosians who were excited to see Ashwa Joe. So it was not a party. It was excited fans and right. ordinary Lagosians. Governor Sonwulu has directed that the attack on journalists should be investigated. I hope next time security will be provided for yes. journalists too. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's the uh, statement okay. from uh, Alausa. Well, all right. We shall take another story. The new Nigeria People's Party has dismissed reports that their presidential candidate, Rabi Yukwankwansu, has accepted to be the running mate to Peter Obi, presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Over the weekend, reports began circulating on social media that Kwan Kwansu had accepted to be Peter Obi's vice president. After a tweet by the NNPP revealed that there were ongoing talks between the Labour Party and the NNPP. In a statement on Sunday, the NNPP Publicity Secretary, Agbo Major, said that the reports were misleading and embarrassing to their great party, its presidential candidate, Kwan Kwan Su, and millions of their supporters in Nigeria and in the diaspora. I mean, I thought this clarification was in order, but I don't know if the details were necessary. I mean, it just goes, it just seems like some sort of um, message to show that Kwan Kwan Su is above Peter Obi. I mean, I, I thought that was quite unnecessary. What, what, what's your thoughts on that? I completely disagree with you. Sure. If, he thinks it's, if he thinks he's above him, if he thinks that's how he wants to phrase his message, he's within his rights to do so. Mm -hmm. But he never claimed, this is Kwakwa, so never said, I'm superior to Peter Obi. He used the word Not embarrassing. Quite, I'm talking about the... Uh, yeah, yes, whatever. Yeah. Nobody said they're superior. He used the word embarrassing. If he finds it that way, then he's within his rights. I keep saying it here. You will never meet a politician without a gargantuan ego. Mm -hmm. So these things don't surprise me. In order for you to stand up and say, vote for me, I'm better than this gentleman on my right or whatever. I'm better than everybody. I can lead you. You do have a massive ego. So these things don't surprise me at all. And yeah, yeah, it's not surprising. I didn't bat an eyelid. You always say that. Yeah. I, I thought it was quite That's unnecessary. how they speak. Dr. Abati. Okay. Well, what we know mm -hmm. so far, which has been confirmed by also the uh, Kwan Kwan so, uh, spokesperson, the spokesperson of uh, the NNPP, New Nigeria People's Party, is that both the NMPP and the Labour Party or, and the two candidates, they're talking together to see how they can form an alliance, an alliance to right. work together. Now, what is that alliance? Is it a merger? Is it, you know, uh, working together to uh, get out, uh, 
to win certain positions in certain places, the modalities have not been worked out. The details have not been worked out, we're told. So the devil is in the details. But it's not strange that, you know, political parties can work together. As for who will be presidential candidate or who will be a, a vice president, a, a running mate, well, of what impact? What will be Peter Obi's gain from that? It will be, we were told this morning, that in Imo North, a major constituency in the uh, Southwest, that members of the PDP, right, and even some members of the APC, with some members of the L uh, Labour Party, they are saying they will work together for Peter Obi. Because Peter will be clearly in, on the list of about five, six uh, Igbo presidential candidates that we have in this process. He is the most prominent, right? So will he risk the groundswell of support that he's getting uh, from the Southeast? And it's up to him. Will he also risk, you know, the symbolism uh, that has de developed around this person, his ideas, you know, among the youth population? particularly on social media. Although we have seen in the kitty that a youth bulge, uh, you, can't, you can't put too much store uh, by it. But at least in terms of, you know, some people uh, coming around him, uh, it will be difficult for him to go, in any case, to go and be a running mate to another person. In practical terms, for him to go and be a, a vice president in the NNPP, he will have to leave uh, the Labour Party, right? So but will he do that? Would that come across as the right thing uh, to do? So there are many questions around this. But you are right, Tundu. Uh, Kwan, the Kwan So camp had made it very clear when this talk began, you know, about uh, Kwan So and uh, Peter will be working together, that Kwan Kwan So cannot be anybody's deputy. This is not the first time yeah, it's okay they are making that, that. Uh, We're not uh, they about are making that clarification. The statement it's embarrassing, yeah. it's all of that. It's so, just, so the devil is in the I'm details, saying. you know, yeah. but we'll see how it works out. Absolutely. Rufai. I mean, one thing is certain. Politicians have very massive ego. And the ego always plays out in everything they do. And like Tundu said rightly, before you can say, vote for me, or like the French say, vote pour moi. It means that you feel you that it is me. you you must be on the ticket. And Peter Obi has made it known that I want to be on the ticket. He left the PDP because he wanted to be on the ticket. That's why he came to the Labour Party. Kwan Kwan Sotu left the party he was before because he couldn't get presidential ticket there because he wanted to be on the ticket. The style of merger, I don't know what will happen, but if I dial back historically in Nigerian politics, there's been a merger. I remember when the House couldn't reach a quorum, I think it was 79 into 83, where they had to do a deal between Incumbent party, Sheo Shagari's party, and you had a little fragment of Namdi Azikiwe's party too in there for the National Assembly to be able to form a majority. But we all saw how that went. That was after the election. That was after the elections, where they shared ministers and the likes and all of that. But we all saw how that went. That scattered in the end. They didn't go anywhere with that. That's one iteration of a merger. Another iteration of a merger is probably what happened in 1999. Olufalaye being the top person on the ticket, AMPP of Bonayano had to step down on Lufala, was top of the ticket, Marishin Kafi was vice president. That's another form of merger. What they want to do is as nebulous as nebula to me. Because yesterday, I got talking to Peter Obi, and his words were, we will come together, we'll build a grand sweat, a coalition, in such a way that the youth can take over their country. And I'm like, what are we saying here? I don't get the fine print of this merger. He said that both of you, I said no, because we want to see it long term in such a way that the youth will now take over their country. That is quite very nebulous to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the fine print of their measure, but, I, but, but whatever it is, mm -hmm. definitely they are talking. Mm -hmm. Other parties too in the works, they are talking. But I can tell you for free, both of them will want to hold a big stake. Yeah. And the problem that always arise is how much concessions they are willing to make for each other. Well, well, I doubt that a merger is even possible at this point. I believe that they have passed the time frame for a merger to happen at this time. So I don't know what the conversation will be. Probably the, the amount right. of, I mean, after the, I don't know, but well, right. let, let's see. <laughs> we'll take another story. Supporters of the spiritual director of the Adoration Ministry in Enugu State, Reverend Father Ejike Mbaka on Sunday defied in protest a directive 
of the Catholic Bishop of Enugu Diocese, Most Reverend Kalistus Onaga, to stop attending Mass at the Adoration Ministry. Bishop Onaga, over the weekend, in a pastoral injunction on attendance to the Catholic Adoration Ministry, enjoined all Catholics to stop visiting the ministry till further notice after it was determined that Father A.G.K. Mbaka's preachings were capable of undermining the Catholic faith. Father Mbaka, in a recent sermon, said that the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, will not win the 2023 presidential election because he lacks the spirit of generosity, a statement which violates the provisions of the canon law. Well, in a video now making the rounds on social media, Father Mbaka's supporters, in defiance of Bishop Anaga's prohibition, trooped out in their numbers on the grounds of the Adoration Ministry, demanding the bishop's removal. Let's take a look. Hmm. Rufai, your take on you this see, story. This is sad. This is the second time this is happening in the space of... You remember well, this happened too when he said something against Pre President uh, Buhari and the Buhari uh, uh, media spokesperson reacted to it and he said maybe because he was looking for contracts and the likes and they went back and forth. He was disciplined that period. His fans, his support group, Fernand Bakar's support group too, went irate. They started fighting. They even destroyed church property in that period. Now... We have seen it again. See, it has now become an occult group. This following has become occultic. Because why I say it's become occultic is the fact that there's something called spiritual hierarchy. Fadam Baka is under the canon law, under the Catholic Church, and is under that Enugu diocese. This same Umbaka, uh, this same was Onaga that they're saying, no more uh, Onaga. So he's had his own sect away from them, and you are taking your own sect. Your members are now fighting against the general prevailing body in the church. You are tearing the church apart. The way forward on this is, the diocese should discipline him once and for all, or else it will cause more mayhem. Secondly, if he wants to break away from the church, he should state it clearly. This is what my issue is. I yeah. think he should just break he, he away. Should just because break away because you, the, see, uh, you can't say you're under the, the Catholic, Catholic Church, church and, and you keep breaking the laws, the yeah. canon laws of the Catholic Church. I agree Because you're you going to call division in the body of Christ. And once there's division in the body of Christ, it becomes sad. I mean, the, the body of Christ is supposed to bring people together in peace and harmony. Now they are fighting a bishop because of somebody. Tundu, your comment. Well, it's aptly called adoration fellowship isn't it but the problem yes. is ministry but the problem is who the adoration is directed at are they worshiping god or worshiping a man in the yeah. person of father yeah. Mbaka? i think the catholic church we should be well, concerned by about the personality yes. court hmm. that uh, father Mbaka seems to have created yes. hmm. under the adoration ministry i see something that looks like mass hypnotism here and you know uh bishop uh, Onaga, Kalistos Onaga, have been criticized in the past for being too lenient with Father Mbaka. Yeah. And he has the bishop and that adoration ministry having been downgraded to the level of a chaplaincy means that he's under the diocese and he can be disciplined by the bishop Absolutely. who applies the canonical law, the, the canon law. And what we've been told is that until that canonical process is it's concluded, over, yeah. you know, yeah. that adoration ministry we'll should not operate. I think it was a but good it's idea. good yeah. security was provided for Absolutely. the bishop because all this uh, Onagamos go group. <laughs> Only God knows uh, what they have in mind. Oh, well, all in, right. uh, in Ugo. All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you all for your great that. analysis. That's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you tomorrow.